Instagram family. What's going on? So it's Friday night. It's been a long and crazy week. We have a new president. We have a whole new set of initiatives that I think are going to be implemented towards um, SARS coronavirus 2 and this pandemic. So I wanted to end the week by talking about uh, three aspects of SARS coronavirus 2 today. And then I'll make sure that when I post this video that I uh, put those three aspects up. Okay. So the first aspect is that of molecular mimicry as it relates to possible autoimmune uh, disease in COVID-19. Um, the other thing I want to do is talk about COVID-19 in the brain and some of these neurological symptoms and what do we know about that. And then the last thing I want to do is talk about the idea of only one dose of the vaccine and whether I think that is uh, going to be sufficient. So first, um, molecular mimicry. Okay, what is molecular mimicry? I want you all to think about the scenario where I've told you before that you have a protein is based, the building blocks or amino acids. It's the string of little small building blocks. Let's just call them circle, 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 right? So they're lined up like this. But in a protein, you might have, let's say a thousand amino acids. You may have, and, the, what we, and not just you may have, what we know is that there are small sections of like the spike protein on SARS coronavirus 2, small sections, you know, like a hexamer, right? Six string, little six amino acids by themselves. Just we know that there are sections, we call them epitopes, okay? So again, an epitope is a small section. Think of it as a small section of a protein, the basic level of a protein. And there are some sections in the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein that are similar to some of the proteins in our own bodies. So what happens is that when your body gets infected with SARS-CoV-2 and it and develops in antibodies towards SARS-CoV-2, it may develop a few antibodies towards our own body as well. We think that's a large part of what's happening and all of this whole body inflammation and craziness that's happened in COVID-19. I can tell you for sure, for me, when I had COVID-19, I you guys can go back and look at my video. Like my, my muscles hurt, but more importantly, my joints hurt. Each joint inside of my finger hurt, right? My joints inside of my feet hurt, okay? Um, it felt like I had arthritis. It 100% felt like I had arthritis, which is basically, again, arthritis is an autoimmune disorder where your body starts either attacking its own, uh, the, the joints, right? So it's attacking different parts of the joint, of uh, the bones in the joints, or um, or like an erosion, right? It's just bone on bone, okay? But in any case, um, that's how I felt when I had COVID-19. I used to walk around the house like an old man. I'm serious. Like I was walking and then we have stairs in our house and I was walking up. I remember I used to have to turn my feet a certain way because it hurt so bad. So that to me was thinking like, man, like this is like that autoimmune that, I'm, that, that, we, that we think is happening, right? So let's fast forward. I, that was July. You know, I got over COVID-19. The only thing that continued was a little bit of respiratory problems. But after that, I got the vaccine. So I told you all I got the vaccine at the end of December. And by the next day, I start having again. I had one day when I had headache, COVID-19 headache. I remember what that was like. Muscle aches, chills, fever to 101, but also joint pains. And I'll be doggone it if my left ankle, once again, didn't feel like I had needles inside of my ankle. Felt like I didn't have function because it felt like arthritis, right? And that was right after the vaccine. And then it all went away. All my symptoms went away a day later. But I feel like that was my body, again, mounting a defense against the, pro the, the spike protein. Um, and some of that shared epitopes, I started feeling that same way. So I, I really believe 
you know, we're going to learn more and more about this virus. And we're going to learn more and more about this molecular mimicry and the potential for autoimmunity. And I kind of touched on that in one of my previous videos, but I was trying to explain to folks like, hey, um, whether your body gets this spike protein through the vaccine or sees the spike protein through infection, you might have this autoimmunity situation. So it's not just the vaccine. The vaccine is nothing but a, it's a spike protein. It's an mRNA. Your body makes the spike protein. Um, whether you, we're all going to end up seeing the spike protein one way or the other, either through the vaccine or through infection. And, and each person's body is going to react to that differently and may end up developing antibodies that, again, become self-attacking antibodies. That is molecular mimicry. That is autoimmune uh, aspect of this virus that we think is happening. I think it's very real, and I've experienced it. So that's part one. Part two is what I wanted to talk about in terms of what's going on in the brain. And so I've talked to some folks on Facebook, and they mentioned that um, you know there was, there's a scientist right now that's released a paper. They've done some mouse studies, and they think that you know they're, that the virus is going and hiding out in the brain. Okay. Interestingly enough, when we look at autopsies from patients who have SARS-CoV-2 infection, who have COVID-19, who get autopsies, we don't see virus all over the brain tissues. We just don't see it. They, they, and, and the few studies have shown, there have been multiple studies, like 18 patients here, 18 patients there. There's whole institutes right now. There's a whole institute in London that's just looking at individuals that have neurological dysfunction from COVID-19 chronically, right? Trying to understand this. But again, when they look at that, they don't see the virus, not nearly to the extent of the amount of the neurological dysfunction that we're all having. And by neurological, dys neurological dysfunction, what I mean is we call it COVID brain. Those of y'all that had COVID-19 like me, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about when I say COVID brain. It's like this cloudiness and thinking that we have, but that it can be even worse. We're talking about the encephalitis that can happen in some individuals. We're talking about numbness and tingling that can happen. And remember, we're talking about the brain, so the brain controls everything, right? So you're talking about breathing. You're talking about um, just every aspect of the things that can be controlled by the brain. That's what we're seeing. All of these neurological dysfunctions that we're seeing, we don't understand why it's happening. And so the best I can tell you is that, yes, there's some studies have shown that they've seen both RNA from the virus in the brain tissue, as well as spike protein in the uh, tissues of the brain, but not to the extent that we see all of this neurological dysfunction. So we don't, we just don't understand that. And we're going to continue to look at that. I'll continue to give updates as I read more papers and get more information on that. The third thing that I wanted to talk about is the idea of what happens if we only take one dose of the vaccine. So I have another video coming. I promised y'all I was gonna do a breakdown of the basically of five vaccines, Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, Novavax. So that's coming, okay? But of those, Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, these are all two dose regimens, right? And so what you see is that after, you know, within three weeks, or should I say, actually, I think it was more like 12 days after the Pfizer vaccine, there was about 52% efficacy in reduction of symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infection. Okay. In the case of Moderna, three weeks after the first dose, there was about an 80% efficacy and reduction of SARS-CoV-2 infection, okay? And then as you, as I've mentioned, um, like Johnson & Johnson is one dose, and so 29 days after the one dose, they see 90%. So in the case of the, of the, of the vaccines that are two dose regimens, okay? AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, I'm sorry, AstraZeneca, Moderna, and, um, and Pfizer, the, the proposal, is that instead of taking, you know, if say, let's say you've got 100 million vaccines. Well, 100 million vaccines in a two-dose regimen is only going to be for 50 million people, right? Because they have to get two of them. So what they're suggesting is 
give one dose right now to more people. Take that 100 million and give it to 100 million people instead of 50 million people. And then we'll wait until we produce more vaccine to give the second dose. Now that second dose might be a week later. I'm sorry, a month later. It might be six weeks later. It might be eight weeks later. It might be three months later. In the UK, what they are doing is they're waiting three months. They're saying, we're just going to take all the vaccine that we have. We're going to give it to everybody. And then we're going to wait three months. If we just maximize vaccinating as many people as possible with the first, with all the doses that we have, we feel like we have a better chance at reducing the burden of this disease, right? And so if I say that there's, you know, 95% efficacy in the two-dose regimen and 52% efficacy in one doses from, the, from Pfizer, what they're saying is, Let's take 100, 100 million people and let's have 52% efficacy and then see what happens, right? Or in the case of Moderna, let's take 100 million people and let's have 80% efficacy as opposed to having 95% efficacy in 50 million people. That's what they're doing. Take all the people, give them one dose because we may not need 95% efficacy in order to control this virus. So I'm not saying that I'm necessarily for that method or against it. I'm only explaining to you the thought process behind that, why they're making that decision. But I do think that the UK is probably, they have a good chance of, it's a big gamble. They have a good chance of having this whole thing uh, under control, probably sooner than the rest of the nation. So um, I did want to just go through those three things. I'll put those three things down. Um, in my notes in terms of what we caught, what we, what we covered, but, and I want you all to go again. I love this being a back and forth thing. Don't just take my word for it. I want you all to read, you know, nothing that I tell you all is for you to just say, yo, Dr. Drummond said it. So it must be true. No, anything I say, feel free to go and verify for yourself. There was a very famous movie when I was in college. Don't y'all judge me. But there was a very famous movie when I was in college. It was called Players Club. All right. We didn't have cable. We didn't have none of that. All we had was our VHS test. A lot of these kids don't even know what a VHS is. But we had our VHS tape and we had Players Club. And so I watched it probably a thousand times freshman year in college. And one of the things that I remember them saying on that Players Club was don't trust anybody's information but your own. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember when Diamond was in class? And the, the professor was talking and she was asleep. He thought she was asleep. And he was like, you know, how do I know you're not going to cheat? And she was like, because I don't trust anybody's information but my own. See, I was paying attention. Yes, I can quote that whole movie back and forth. Don't listen. Don't at me. OK, <laughs> don't at me. But my point is, you don't have to just trust my information. You can trust your information. Take the stuff that I'm giving you. And then feel free to go back and learn. Um, as I mentioned to you all, I don't respond to DMs. I'm just getting way too many. But if you leave these comments, I try to go through and try to respond, to respond to them. But I want everybody to take control of their own health. So part of what I'm doing is giving you the information. And then you can take it, go back and read more. And this is a two-way two -way street. Two-way two -way street. All right? So anything, I hope that helped out a little bit just going over those three. And um, I'll be back with another video. I do have that video on the way. I promise you. All right. Y'all have a good night.